Okay, it's a great day to be in real estate. This is Dwayne Beisner, sales manager and sales representative for ERA. Did you miss me? It's been a few days. Sorry about that. Been at the Tom Ferry uh, seminar, the summit, the last uh, few days and tomorrow too as well. But trying to squeeze in a video here so you don't uh, forget about me too quick. Anyway, the quote of the day, the poor man is not he who is without a cent, but he who is without a dream by Harry Kemp. And for the joke of the day, um, a very shy guy goes into a bar and sees a beautiful woman sitting at the other end. After an hour of gathering up his courage, he finally goes over to, uh, to her and asks tentatively, um, would you mind if I chatted with you for a while? To which she responds by yelling at the top of her lungs, no, I won't sleep with you tonight. By now the entire bar is staring at them. Naturally, the guy is hopelessly and completely embarrassed and he slinks back to his table. After a few minutes, the woman walks over to him and apologizes. She smiles at him and says, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. You see, I'm a graduate student in psychology and I'm studying how people respond to embarrassing situations. To which he responds at the top of his lungs, What do you mean $200? Payback. You know what they say. Anyway, so for the business tip of the day, you want to be creative? Take the logical and make it ridiculous. Take the ridiculous and make it logical. Think about that. And for social commentary, uh, before I get to the main story, just wanted to say, hey, bad news. Lindsay Lohan is out of jail and is out in the public right now. Good news. Her mom says that she's going to New York. So at least here in New York, I mean, in the L.A. area, we're safe. Too bad for you guys on the East Coast. Okay, but for America's middle class, there's a, a little post I found. The hits just keep on coming. A lot of ink and pixels have been spilled this week over the ICI's report that equity mutual funds suffered net withdrawals totaling over $33 billion the first seven months of 2010. A myriad of reasons were cited for the trend, including a mistrust of stocks, the flash, the, uh, the flash cash, and an aging uh, population. Perhaps the biggest reason of all hasn't even gotten attention yet. Americans are making do with less and less and less, and they don't have the money to put into stock funds. And many are taking the money out of their investments to pay for their basic necessities like shelter, clothing, and food. With wages stagnant for those who still haven't had a, uh, who still have a job, a lot of people are willing to tap into their uh, nest eggs to keep their standard of living uh, going, says Damian Hoffman, co-founder of Wall Street Cheap. Com. A, a lot of people are living out of principle. There's no other way to get around that. Fidelity's recent report of a sharp increase in number of 401k participants seeking loans or hardship withdrawals in the second quarter is further evidence of the disappearing middle class. These are basic emergency ways to fund yourself. We think it's a scary statistic, Hoffman said. Where is the middle class going to be if they draw down their 401ks drastically over the course of the next few years? Hoffman notes, this trend is most prevalent among baby boomers, including many considered at the upper, uh, in the upper middle class who thought they'd be able to draw much more from fixed income securities that, that offered uh, in the current uh, environment of ultra low rates. With uh, many younger Americans facing a difficult job market, stagnant wages, potentially higher taxes, potentially, huh, definitely higher taxes, with the administration that we've got right now, and the burden of caring for aging parents, this trend could expand with devastating socioeconomic consequences, he fears. We have more people beyond the boomer generation, or if we have more people beyond the boomer generation, lose a substantial part of their 401ks, it's going to be a negative feedback loop, he says. In an effort not to be part of the negative feedback loop, Hoffman suggests some reasons to be optimistic, including evidence of more individuals using the web and social networking tools to create actual money-making enterprises. That doesn't even seem to begin to approach the problem. Um, I'll just say for myself, I used to be part of the middle class, and I know I've been disappearing myself. But, after all, the government that we've got now with its social agenda wants us all to be the same, which would be broke. Um... Also, for Dwayne's Real Estate News, housing affordability near record high for six consecutive quarters. This is a story by Carrie Bay. Bolstered by favorable interest rates and low home prices, 
Housing affordability in the second quarter remained near its highest level of the past two decades, according to the Housing Opportunity Index um, developed by the National Association of Home Builders and Wells Fargo. It was the sixth consecutive quarter that the affordability index hovered near a record high. The index indicated that 72.3% of all new and existing homes sold in the second quarter of 2010 were affordable to families, earning the national median income of $64,400 a year. The index for the second quarter was slightly more affordable than the previous quarter and almost equaled the record high 72.5% set during the first quarter of 2009. Until 2009, the HOA, the HOI, I should say, rarely topped 67% and never reached 70%. Homeownership is within reach of more households than it ever has been for almost a generation, said NAHB Chairman Bob Jones, a home builder from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Interest rates continue to hover at historic low levels. The economy is beginning to rebound and house prices are starting to stabilize. The index found Santa Cruz, New York to be the most affordable major housing market in the country. There, 97.2% of all homes sold were affordable to households earning the area's median family income of $64,300. The second most affordable market was Indianapolis, which had, had held the top ranking for nearly five years, followed by Detroit, Youngstown, Ohio, and Buffalo, New York. Among smaller housing markets, the most affordable was Springfield, Ohio, or 96.6% of homes sold during the second quarter of 2010 were affordable to families earning a median income of $56,800. Other smaller housing markets near the top of the index included Mansfield, Ohio, Bay City, Michigan, Monroe, Michigan, Michigan, and Lansing, Michigan. New York City continued to lead the nation as the least affordable major housing market where only 19.9% of all homes sold during the quarter, the second quarter were affordable to those earning the area's median income of $65,600. That's unbelievable, less than 20%. This was the ninth consecutive quarter that the New York Metropolitan Division has occupied this position. The other met major metro areas near the bottom of the affordability scale included San Francisco, Irvine, California, bummer, that's where I'm at near there, Los Angeles, bummer, I'm near there, and Honolulu, all metro areas that have lingered among the bottom rankings for several quarters. San Luis Obispo, California, was the least affordable of the smaller metro housing markets in the country during the second quarter. Others included Santa Cruz, California, Ocean City, New Jersey, Santa Barbara, California, and Napa, California. But i got to say this, like I've always said it, regardless of what you just heard there, this is the best quarter, or the best uh, buyer's market you and I are ever going to see in our lifetime in real estate. So if you or anybody you know is thinking about buying or selling a home, give us a call here at ERA. We can help you anywhere in the world. And if you're thinking about making a move into real estate for a career, it's a great time to do that. Give me a call. I'll talk to you more about that. Uh, this is Dwayne signing off. Happy trails to you. As always, proud to be an American. Make sure you visit the website, rejedi.com, or give me a call at 714-996-3000. Or email me at D-A-B-E-I-S-N-E-R at yahoo.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.